Hello students, welcome to Legacy IS Academy. In today's video, we are going to discuss about the recent news of significant damage that has been happening across the world in the coral reef ecosystems of the ocean. So we are going to discuss in details why the damage to coral reef matters to us as a human and what is the coral bleaching, the worst form of damage that coral reefs are suffering, the reason behind this and what are the major steps that we can take collectively to ensure that the damage can be reversed or at least contained. So first of all, why this particular issue is news because coral reefs have been undergoing significant damage at least from last three decades and it has increased manifold in last eight to ten years. Now what are coral reefs? So coral reefs are essentially just big limestone structure. Limestone is calcium carbonate. So these are big calcium carbonate slab platform like a structure that is built due to death of millions and millions of tiny coral creatures which live in the ocean which are also known by the polyps. The reason why this structure is made up of limestone is because the outer skeleton of the corals is made up of calcium carbonate because it produces calcium ion from its body and takes up carbonate ion from the oceanic water and due to this reaction you have development of calcium carbonate. Now, as far as the distribution of coral reefs are concerned, they are found in more than 100 countries across the world. However, since they cannot survive in very cold temperature, most of the coral reefs of the world are distributed between 30 degrees south to 30 degrees north of latitude. Or in other way, we can also say that these coral reefs are largely concentrated in the tropical areas or tropical part of the ocean. Especially if you look at three countries, Indonesia, Philippines and Australia, more than 45% of the global, cor global corals are concentrated around the coastline of these three countries alone in the tropical zone. The problem is they are not looking too healthy as per the recent research. The planet already has lost about half of its shallow water corals in the past three decades and if the destruction keeps on going at the current rate, up to 90% of the coral reef will disappear by the middle of this century that is by year 2050. Now, what are the reasons behind the destruction and damage to the coral reefs? So, reason can be divided into two ways. We can first of all understand the local reasons, localized pressures, and then we can talk about the global reasons or the globalized pressure. Now, local, local pressures are like related to the activity that is performed by the coastal community, such as overfishing reduces population of grazing fishes and that can smother the corals, deforestation that can result into soil erosion, and then the soil sediments can go in the coastal water, blocking light and choking the corals, causing their death and destruction. Third, also we talk about the development, the rapid fast pace development that is happening in the coastal areas that also typically results in huge amount of soil and nutrients that wash out into the reef habitat and can cause physical destruction of the corals or any kind of pollution that is emanating from the land such as toxic chemicals, pathogens or the discharge of effluent, untreated discharge especially of effluent by the industries in coastal areas can also cause a lot of pathogens to infest the corals and can cause reduction or destruction in the coral habitat. If you look at the global scale, so basically the climate change, especially the pattern of global warming that we are witnessing since last past century, mainly as a result of industrialization and vehicular emission, that can also cause these corals to become stressed and the corals become stressed due to higher temperature in the ocean. They eject their symbiotic zoogen like algae on which they depend upon for their food and thus finally die due to the lack of food. Apart from that, acidification of ocean related to climate change also impairs the ability of corals to build their calcium carbonate skeleton as we have discussed in the beginning of the video and that results in slower growing corals that break up easily. Obviously, rising sea level result in more coastal erosion and stress to deeper growing corals and also increased number of tropical storm and their intensity that is also being witnessed due to climate change also results in the restation of the local coral reef. So these are some of the major outlines that we can understand affecting the corals. So obviously the question comes since corals are living in the oceanic areas at most they can affect the coastal community. Why we as a human should be concerned about that? What is the significance of coral reef for us? So the first and foremost significance that coral reef plays is that it ensures the protection from the coastal flooding. And as per the recent report that has released by United Nations Development Program, almost 200 million people across the world depend on the coral reefs to protect their coastal communities from storm surges and storm waves. 
On the other hand, corals also actually act as a low crested breakwater and absorb almost 97% of the tidal wave or the coastal wave energy, which substantially reduces coastal flooding and erosion that can also have positive impact on the soil health in the coastal areas, leading to more agriculture and the more growth of uh, or more higher yield of the crop in the coastal plains. If you try to understand this from the economic point of view in the forms of data, so as far as the coral reefs are concerned, collectively they help avert almost $1.8 billion of, uh, of damage each year by the tropical storms and by the coastal flooding. So this is how coral reefs are significant for all of us. But not only it is the coastal flooding, but also they play a very important role in ensuring healthy biodiversity in the oceanic areas. For example, as far as the area is concerned, coral reefs cover less than 0.5% of the Earth's surface. But as far as their marine species are concerned, they are home to almost 25% of the all marine species. And it's due to this particular region, corals many times has been recognized by the scientists as a rainforest of the ocean. That means how rainforest on the land surface plays a very important role of ensuring biodiversity high biodiversity as well as act as a lung of the earth. Similarly, corals in the marine uh, area also have a similar kind of function. Thus, by acting like a host of such huge biodiversity, it provides resilience to the planet. A vast resource of potential scientific discoveries are present inside the coral. And this is a result of millions of years of evolution that is happening in the corals. Well, biodiversity underpins a healthy planet and social well-being. Thus, coral also plays a very important role, not only at local level, but at the global level. But not only these, but also in the healthcare and the pharma sector, corals can play a very, very pivotal role in the coming time. For example, 80% of the life currently is underwater, and researchers are increasingly looking to marine organisms to satisfy the need for novel chemicals and enzymes. Also, Corals can be built and the resources that we find in corals can be help, can help to build the pharmaceuticals or the medicines of tomorrow. And actually the prospect of discovering any new drug is very, very high in particularly the coral reefs and generally in the sea is 100 of times more likely than to finding one on the land because a large part of the coral reefs in the ocean is still unexplored and treasure trove of large variety of animals as well as the plants. So let us look at some of the important examples of the coral reef and the marine resources that help us in developing new medicine. So for example, we have anti-cancer anti agent ARAC that actually is obtained from a spongy looking substance that is called a sea sponge found in the Caribbean Sea, the coastal regions of the Caribbean Sea. Similarly, we have another compound called as dolastatin tea, which is used for the treatment of breast and liver cancers, tumors and leukemia. These are also found from the substances that is called as sea fungi or sea fans, sea whips also sometimes, and also trabectatin or iliotherobin, these kind of compounds which are very, very important for slowing down the growth of cancer cell as well as can be used for the treatment of cancer such as chemotherapy as also derived from the coral resources. So these are some of the notable examples of how corals can help in the medical sciences as well. But not only these, corals also play a very important role in ensuring food security and providing us food with food resources. For example, it provides shelter and function as nursery ground from some pretty commercially important fish such as lobsters, prawns and all these. And overall, if you look at the fishing resources that is offered by corals alone, it has a value of almost $6.8 billion a year. And also, from the perspective of human population, Almost 1 billion people across the world can actually source their food or income directly from the coral reef. So you can understand that corals have multifaceted way of helping and providing us with a lot of different different type of resources in almost all spheres of our life. So the question comes that how corals can be uh, protected. So first of all, at the local level, transplantation of corals can be done, as has been done in the case of India as well. Many time attempt has been made to transplant some of the corals near the Malavan coast of uh, Goa or near the Mangalore coast of Karnataka. Also, there has been some effort by some countries and state to establishment of marine protection areas so that corals cannot uh, corals do not have to withstand the huge pressure from tourism, underwater or undersea diving or also different type of economic exploration. And third and the most important since pollution level if is higher, corals will die naturally. So stopping of polluted runoff from the agricultural land as well as the effluent from the 
see uh, affluent from the industrial discharge can go a long way in ensuring the <clears throat> health of the corals however in conclusion what we can say that all these efforts which we have discussed might go into vain if humanity does not get a hold on a climate change because in the beginning i told you global warming is the biggest culprit that is causing the stress among the corals and causing coral bleaching or death of the corals and it is a singular threat to the future of coral reefs and that is why in the long term if we want to protect and preserve our coral reef we have to reduce the greenhouse gas emission because that will give the best sort for coral reefs for their survival so I hope you understood about this particular topic about coral reef, the threats they face and the significance they hold for the humans. If you like the video, please hit the like button, share it with your friends as well as subscribe to our channel for more social content. Thank you very much.